Howdy. We still have some work to do on our risk assessments. However, I want to go on and start talking about <clears throat> some other topics, mainly the topics on the vulnerabilities and how that plays into a risk assessment. One of your observations should be or could be that out of the NIST SP800 control families, they are processes and procedures and they have very little to do with the electronic. They don't tell you that. They tell you about putting, for instance, two-factor authentication, but they don't tell you how to do that. They tell you to um, uh, limit the number of unsuccessful logons. You're going to put that in, a, in, in, a, in your risk assessment, in your SSP, in your system security plan, and then you're going to write that in your procedure. But they don't tell you how to do that electronically because that's the whole idea of the control families is they are technology independent that type of technology is going to change but the process the procedure the policy the rules the controls must remain the same so we want to talk about risk assessment and we do want to talk about the electronic because there is an important aspect to that to know the vulnerabilities the probability of the vulnerability being exploited and how that could create a threat of an attack so our topics today are the NVD, the CVE, and the CVSS in analyzing vulnerabilities. <clears throat> At the end of this, I'd like you to be able to explain what these are, compare and contrast the three, <clears throat> and then describe use of them. And you're not going to do this exhaustively, but find some examples of how you would use these relative to the NIST SP, uh, uh, that should say 800-53 control families. <clears throat> so. The National Vulnerability Database, NVB, the CVE is the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposure, and the CVSS is the Common Vulnerability Scoring System. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's going to be a bunch of other acronyms, but these are the three I want you to focus in on. <clears throat> and the NVD uses something called the SCAP, the Security Content Automation Protocol. So let's take a minute and go look at the National Vulnerability Database. And for some reason, the NIST site's been working kind of slow for me today. <coughs> so here it is. And if you are not familiar with this, at the conclusion of this video, you need to spend some time with this. So there's a general introduction to it. There's the vulnerabilities, the daily feeds, the metrics having to do with these, the calculator, the products, okay, how you can search. So let's just see. Let's see. Hmm. Let's just check out a vulnerability that's been published, the last 20 scored vulnerabilities and their summaries. And then here you see, now this is the National Vulnerability Database, the CVSS severity, the scoring system used. So we can look through all of these. Oh my gosh, here's one that's critical. <clears throat> okay, they give it a numeric value, but then they quantitatively call it critical medium, low, and the like. Okay, so what else can we do with the National Vulnerability Database? Well, let's say I want to search on some of them. And look at all the different kinds of statuses that we can have for the CVE. Okay. And by the way, you can contact them and tell them if there's an error or other things. Let's search for some. Let's do a vulnerability search. I want to look at vulnerabilities. And, you know, I think I'll give it a general search. I want to see what kind of vulnerabilities are out there for a Windows 10. Oops, better put Windows 10. And I can do a basic search, vulnerability search. <clears throat> Comes up with 5,733 matching records. And here it is. Well, today, is, as of just last week, there's been a new vulnerability found. 
They have not yet had time to assess the cer observability using the scoring system. Let's see if we can find any that have a scoring with them. Let's go further down here. It's ordered by age. Yeah, so, so if you go further down the list, you can find some <clears throat> that have had, that they've had long enough to use their sever, uh, the sever, excuse me, so, so how severe it is, right? So you can search it. It uses the SCAP protocol and it reports publicly known vulnerabilities. Now, you're probably thinking, what does that mean? Well, first of all, a vulnerability has to be discovered to be reported. So it, it can't guess, guess and estimate, right? <clears throat> and there's some criticism that it lags the actual vulnerability discovery, that there's a certain lag time. Well, okay, you know, that could be the case, but still, that mentioned the CVE, and another website we want to go to then, the CVE is the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposure, and it's by MITRE, and MITRE <clears throat> is not a government agency per se, it's not a federal government agency, but it is run by a not-for-profit type of quasi, you almost think they're government, called MITRE. <clears throat> Again, you have a whole list of information here. Uh, it gives you a, a numbering system, okay? It gives you a description and a public refer uh, rec excuse me, reference for, again, publicly known cybersecurity vulnerabilities. And you can also look at products and services from around the world, <clears throat> including the National Vulnerability Database. So these are all somewhat related, but not the same thing. CVE is actually like a subset of the National Vulnerability Database. Okay, so again, you can search the list. Um, uh, can we do a Windows 10 here too and see what happens? Yep, and it gives you the description. So the name and the description, okay. And if you want to click on it, just randomly pick one. It's going to <clears throat> relate it to the National Vulnerability Database. It's going to describe that it's an escalation of privilege vulnerability exists when these certain conditions are met. It's going to give us references on where this came from. It's going to say when the entry was created and assigned. Okay. Now, again, when this is over, I want you to spend some time looking at these. I can walk you through it, but it's actually better for you to uh, do this yourself. So you get some hands on, figure out what this is. Okay. So then the CVSS, especially from something from a special interest group, and it's a free and open industry standard. It is the scoring standard. So it's not affiliated with NIST, but NIST uses this in their NV. Uh, D, National Vulnerability Database. So again, a third organization, special interest group that came up with this, um, the Coleman Vulnerability Scoring System, captures the principal characteristics of vulnerability and produces a numerical score reflecting its severity. We saw this in the NVD. We saw the vulnerability. We saw that the new vulnerabilities did not yet have their score because they hadn't been analyzed. Okay, but from this qualitative, quantitative, then we always want to do qualitative, low, medium, high, and critical. Okay, so again, spend some time going through this. And if you're interested, you can look here. There's a self paced online training course and that explains the, the latest version 3.0. Okay, so let's look back at these slides a little bit and make sure we know what we're talking about. So my, I said National Vulnerability Database, Common Vulnerabilities, and, uh, and the scoring system, and we're going to compare and contrast the three. And I want you to be able to think of how you use them relative to the NIST SP, and that should say 853 control families. So the NVD is your National Vulnerability Database, your CVE, Common Vulnerabilities and Exposure, and the CVSS is a scoring system. The CVSS gives you a numeric value, which can then be translated into a quantitative value, low, medium, high, or critical. The CVE is part of the NVD, and all of these work together. NVD is NIST, 
um, CVE comes from MITRE and CVSS comes from a SIG. A good way for things to get done. It's industry and government driven standards working together. We've talked about these points. We've discussed these points. We've discussed these points. There are others out there. There's a common weakness enumeration. There's a common attack pattern enumeration classification, dot, dot, dot. I could have filled this page. I just want you to concentrate on those three. So what are the differences? CVE is a part of the NVD. NVD allows more analysis and search capabilities, but they are synchronized. So remember when we went to CVE page, it referred back to the NVD, okay? And the CVE and CVSS, Again, CVE is a free and open source standard that comes out of MITRE, but it doesn't provide the severity scoring <clears throat> as does CVSS. They all provide different aspects of the information. You need to be familiar with all three of these. So how are they used in the control families? Well, they're not particularly, but the only control that I can find that directly talks about doing something with this is RA5, Risk Assessment 5, which is doing your vulnerability scanning. And that's the only one I can find that's very direct. Now, of course, there's indirect, but this is where it talks about doing your scans for vulnerabilities in the information system, employs vulnerability scanning tools, analyzes vulnerability scan reports and results from security control assessments, uh, remedies legitimate vulnerabilities, shares information obtained from the vulnerability. So when you implement this RA5, your knowledge from your NVD, your CVSS, and your uh, CVE will all be pertinent to this. As I said, the controls are technology independent. It's not going to tell you how to do it, and it's not going to mention the those by name other than, <clears throat> if you look here, talks about the common vulnerabilities and exposures, naming conventions. Again, I the open vulnerability assessment language. I'm telling you, there's like a thousand acronyms out here. And the National Vulnerability Database, right? And oh, look, the Common Vulnerability Scoring System, CVSS. So hopefully you see how this is all coming together. So here's what I want you to do. <clears throat> I want you to look through the NIST control families and determine where other interfaces to these occur. And we're going to post this as a discussion issue. Now, listen to what I'm saying. I haven't posted the risk assessment as I said I would last week because I'm tracking who's watching videos and I'm still seeing a significant number of people who I think are just reading the slides and not watching the video. I'll give you a couple more days and then we'll catch up on that. All right. Thank you for listening and stay tuned.